just enjoying, you know, some summertime. I'm still, people know that I teach, but I'm still teaching over the summer a little bit. But, you know, my wife and I are planning our vacation. My wife's planning our vacation, so. Um, nice. This will, be, this will be real fun. That's going to be Just awesome. like, you know, living the dream the best I can. Just playing way too much Destiny 2 right now. Oh, how is that? It's, uh, I think it's great. Um, the Final yeah. Shape is a pretty good DLC pack. If you like Destiny, then you, it's kind of got must get. But it's a lot. It's a, I mean, it's, it's a it's a whole hefty boy. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'll, but you know, it's if you don't like if you don't like the grind, if you don't like loot games, then you don't want to play this game. Right. That's all. That's all you're doing is looting and grabbing. Speaking of looting and grabbing, let's talk about the Wolverine. Yeah, I, uh, we're recording on Father's Day, and this is actually a pretty good Father's Day movie. It is? When you think about it, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's some father issues going on. There's yeah. definitely some father issues going on, yeah. Sort of. I mean, the villain is a dad. That's pretty much Right, it. exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Not 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 a very good villain, to be honest with you. Yeah, not the I greatest. Some things, I've got some interesting things to say about this movie. Um... <laughs> So I did actually, I told you that I've never seen this movie before, but I have actually seen this movie before, and I just totally forgot about it. It's like 11 years old. Wow. I didn't realize that I'd seen it before until I started watching it. I was like, oh, I have seen this. Well, I think, so we know that Fox bought the X-Men franchise from Marvel way back in the day, and Fox made the X-Men movies, made all three and the last X Men movie, the X Men Last Stand, was absolutely terrible. And so, and so was X, and so was Wolverine X Men Origins. Wolverine it was also bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, and to go back to X Men Origins Wolverine, I think what they wanted to do was create origin movies based off the X Men characters. But for they sure, to do yeah, yeah, way too much with Wolverine didn't work. So I think this was a chance for Fox to say, okay, we're going to make the quintessential. Wolverine movie. This is the Wolverine movie fans want. And it's still it's close, but not there absolutely yet. I think Logan's going to be the Wolverine movie that everybody's wanted. But this movie, definitely not it. But, I mean, whatever. Right. It still made a gazit boom amount of money. So nobody really cares in the end. And it still has some pretty quintessential Wolverine stuff. I mean, there's lots of Wolverine fights. That's for sure. He's fighting all over the place. His shirt's yeah. off half the time. Uh, Hugh Jackman is the most jacked up he's ever been. That guy's huge. Uh, it's like thinned out. But, like that's one scene where he's walking and his pecs are popping. You know, like it's, it's, <laughs> if you love if you love Wolverine porn, I missed that it. scene or I didn't and, notice. And that's the Wolverine. And like if you ever th- as Wolverine fans, that's a Wolverine red dedicated just to Wolverine. And that's people who that that's the people who don't understand that's that's their complete sexuality yet. <laughs> they're mm. like they they wondering why they they wondering a lot of things about themselves. When they're, wo- like, they're Wolverine sexuals. Yeah, well, very like th- there's a whole thing about what color outfit do you like best with Wolverine? Like it's like what, ah. what are we talking about? It's just a whole thing. Okay. Um and there's hardcore Wolverine fans out there. Is uh, this and, like a big popular Wolverine story? From the comics set in Japan? Is, yes. Is that what yes, this is? Yes, it is. There's a bunch of there's a there's a bunch of stories uh, and lore connected to him in his time in Japan as a samurai, as an actual samurai. Oh, um, okay. So, and he's also connected to the... the like the, during the actual, yeah. I think it was the Edo era of the samurai? Which doesn't really fit the timeline very well, but he definitely did spend some time in Japan like that. Uh, and also, it's like there's some um, stuff about him... Uh, that's the old stuff. That's now, as a samurai, is he using a sword or is he just using his claws? I guess he, I, that's the thing. I guess if you if you're you know Wolverine if you if you're a Wolverine sexual, 
I think you want him to have a sword and his claws out at the same time. So, you, so you're fighting with your claws. Maybe, out yeah, yeah, yeah. Sword. Like he's got a sword in one hand and claws out in the but other. But I feel right? like it's weird when he has a sword because it's like, why do you have a sword? You have claws, you know. <laughs> Gives him a little bit longer reach, I guess. I guess so, but also it makes him look like awesome. I guess like, I, I, I don't know. It looks can, cool. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure if you like. I'm sure someone's put in chat GPT Wolverine claw sword. You know, and it's, he's got like 8,000 swords. Now, there was a very price. special sword in this movie that I don't remember the name of, but it, they gave it a name. They called it like the uh, Separator. That, was like that whatever. the one at the very end? With the, that no, it's at the fire? beginning. She brings it to him in oh, Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, I, there's no real, I don't know anything about that sword. I think she's, like the, 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 the name that she gave it, translates to the separator like it's made for separating limbs from bodies i mean yeah i mean naming swords is cool right <laughs> i mean that's the that's everybody named i thought this sword, was right? a very good movie actually until the end of it that's the thing and that's what i want to talk about this movie is actually not terrible um i like the idea like that it's it's well shot yeah i like the idea that's just wolverine there's no other x-men except right. for Jean Grey's dead body. Jean Grey's, Jean Grey's dead body. Well, girl. the imagination of yeah. Jean Grey. And, like, real, real quick, man, Jean Grey must be something else if, like, everybody just falls in love with her like that all the time. Like, what? Well, oh, Jesus. Um, like, it's I like, guess. I, 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 everybody loves Jean Grey. Uh, it was, okay. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, no other X Men. It's, like, it's Logan all in Japan. There's a lot of Japan corporate stuff that I don't really understand. And there's some great action scenes. But the ending really just felt, once again, there's two things I think is interesting. The ending felt like some X-Men exec was, some, some exec was like, we need a big boss fight, you know? And then second, I'm right. not really sure how Viper fits into all this. Like, she kind of feels like a character they wanted to put in maybe some sexual stuff in there, make it like a hot, we need a, re- we need a really hot woman in here mm-hmm. that put Viper in. Like, all right, so I, now you're, you're stepping on my questions. I got questions. Sure, okay. The the, do the doctor already? lady. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and do it. You're stepping on them already. All right. Step the doctor on. lady, Viper. Yeah. What's her deal? Tell us about her. She's like a, I would say, not even a B-list Wolverine villain. She's just, she's been in the comics for a long time, but I don't really know much about her. Um, some of her powers are, like, I don't know if she even has powers. Um, she's similar to to the character i'm trying to make sure i know much about her she was she was involved with hot with um hydra i think or something i'm not really sure how she fits into anything um but she has she's immune to toxins okay um and like that's it like i think can she spit like stuff on you and make you all bubbly and whatnot i don't know i don't know i don't know anything about her Uh, and and to be honest with you she's like very Low level. Yeah, she's a Hydra character, and nobody that nobody really cares about. So I mean, yeah. you can make her do whatever she wants to. I know she has a weird alien mutant tongue in this movie, um, but I don't really think that's comic accurate. I thought that was a weird character in the movie. To be honest with you, you know, here's the deal: you don't need her. You don't need her. You don't need this. This movie would have been way better if they took a lot of the comic book stuff out of it and just had Wolverine in it. Uh, but they just they couldn't help themselves. And like even for the short period of time where Wolverine's powers were gone, mm-hmm. you didn't really need that either. But like the way that she does it is by putting a um uh like a a robot mm-hmm. insect inside of him. Mm-hmm. Like doesn't she have she doesn't have powers that she can do that her like with her venom or whatever i I don't know i don't think i don't think she has any powers i don't i don't i don't know and the thing is it's like the idea that wolverine doesn't have powers for a while was fascinating to me like that that was cool because like Mm. all of a sudden he's vulnerable which means that right he could die man these bullets hurt yes so like that's good and i think that was a really smart thing they actually going to do that more with logan they're going to limit his regenerative powers they're going to make him vulnerable Okay. Uh, not, to, not, to, not to ruin that. It was over pretty quickly in this movie, though, which exactly. is why I didn't they feel didn't like... They didn't like yeah. it. They, they didn't stick to it. They were like, okay, we're going to make him vulnerable. Okay, we're sick of doing that. You know, like, It's like, right. no, they should have made him vulnerable for a whole movie and, and until mm-hmm. the very end. Um, mm-hmm. But they didn't, they didn't really feel good about it. 
Um, but yeah, I don't think Vi- Viper didn't need to be in the movie. And neither did Silver Samurai at the end. That wasn't neat either. Oh, okay. So there is a character that's uh, uh, all metal samurai. He doesn't look like that. He's just a regular old samurai with silver armor, but he doesn't look like that. So that's a key component. Okay. Like he, he so they took have... like the name of a character from the comics and went with that, but it's not really based on the character at all. He looks like him, and it's interesting. The character in the comics who plays this, who is the Silver Samurai in the comics was actually the guy with the bow and arrow, the bow halfway through it. You mm. remember that guy, the the his her boyfriend that got that died, that got killed. Yeah, Harado. He's the Silver Samurai. So I'm not really sure why they did a name swap there. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, And, like, again, um, the Silver Samurai is just, like, a B-level type deal. And, like, it's not not a big deal. I think he was... He wasn't robotic or anything. No, he was Viper's bodyguard at some point, um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so they didn't really... (laughs) They didn't do a really good job with that kind of stuff, you know? Um, Right. Yeah, none of that's comic accurate. No, I guess it's not really. It's just and like very can, loosely inspired by. The yeah, comics. nobody cares about Silver Samurai. Like you don't really read comics about Silver Samurai. Um, but I think he's. I know the name though. You yeah. know, like his name is something that people. Maybe it's just because it's a cool sounding name. I guess. Wasn't he in X Men ninety seven very briefly? Yes, he was. He was. So when the when these world global events were happening, he was representing Japan. Yeah. Right. Okay. What about Marika? She uh, has some sort of powers in this. Yes, yeah, so she can perceive she's a mutant in this, and she can perceive people's death, which is a weird well, weird mutant power. She doesn't have any mutant powers in the comics. She is from the comics. She definitely is. What's her relationship to Wolverine? Wait, are you saying y- Yiko? Mar- do you say Mariko or Yikio? Mariko, I think, is the character. No, Mariko is just his girlfriend. Yikio, Y-U-K-I-O, she's the mutant with the, with the, who can perceive death. Uh, okay, okay, well, yeah, I'm looking at the cast and uh, yeah, getting she's, confused. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, Yukio, yeah, what's her deal? Yeah, Yukio. In the comics, nothing, she just has a sword and she chops people up. She can't see their deaths in the future? No, which is also a weird power to have. And I think she, she had. I think related she had to Alex. Wolverine in the, in the. Yeah, she's a Wolverine, so she's been around with Wolverine for a while and doing different things. Was um, she there when he was a samurai? Uh, or is this like a different? This is, is this like a modern era? Modern era, yes. Okay. She was not around when he was a samurai. Okay. Mm-hmm. She did. Apparently, I'm looking at the um, fandom.com. Apparently, she did some stuff with Gambit. She also had to hang out with the hand. So they pretty much just took a bunch of characters from Wolverine that had Japanese origins and threw them into right. the movie. Which is I think that's all of my questions, except for the fact that when I'm looking at IMDb, I see a dude credited as Redbeard. Hang on. Redbeard? I don't even remember him in the movie, but that's got to be like a comic reference, right? Redbeard? I don't know. We'll even check. Um, but going back to Yukio real quick, Yukio, yeah. the, the actor who plays her, um, what's her name? R- Rila, Rila Fukushima. She also did a role in the, the Arrow TV show. So she was actually in the Arrow TV show. And I thought she did an excellent job in that. I think she was Interesting. a Okay. Just to kind of put that in. Put that in. Shout out to the Arrow fans. One day we might do an Arrow podcast. Arrow was pretty good. Arrow was pretty good. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was like one of my. It's like one of my favorite TV shows. Now I was actually very emotionally invested in it. Uh, yeah, Redbeard is from the. He's a guy database in the comics, but I mean, he's nothing. Like I don't. <laughs> Do you remember him from the movie? I don't even remember him from the no, movie. No, I don't. This is a weird thing. And like, here's the deal. Like, I'm curious. I want. I want to know more about the legal legal things when when people buy property like this. Right. Because it's weird. Fox bought all these characters. So like. When the deal was set and Marvel sold all these X Men things to Fox, was there a guy in a room thinking, "Okay, Yukio, um, Silver Samurai, Miracle, 
Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, here's all these characters with Wolverine. They are owned by by Fox now. Like it's like, is there anybody? Who, I guess there's a bundle. It's like a list of names of characters, and like someone's like, okay, uh, we have all these characters. Isn't that crazy? Like it's like, okay, we have all these characters. Like we we can use all of them anyway. Even even like with the with the Spider Man stuff, they have all these B list Spider Man right, characters, and just right. like vacuum it up like a Hoover, and then they can mm-hmm. spray it anywhere they want. This is it's very strange to me. There's but another. Now, there's another actor who's credited as Pock Face. I'm going to assume he's comic accurate as well. <laughs> um, can I talk uh, about Fem- can, I, can I talk about Femkin J- Johnson real quick? Femkin Pomka Jensen. Yeah. yeah, she. I think she's the quintessential Jean Grey. Don't you? Um, I mean, she's done a pretty good job. I think the quintessential. Uh, Jean Grey is from the uh, animated cartoons. Okay, that's fine. Do you know who plays her voice? You know who's the who her voice actress is? I don't actually. She's the same voice actress from um, Mass Effect. She she does the female. Oh, character. okay, mm-hmm. cool. She's really good. Uh, so but yeah, voice. certainly Fonka Jensen is uh, the best we've seen live action. And I kind of feel like she like her her connection to. Her, Hugh Jackson, Hugh Jackman, and Vivica Jensen—they do a very good job when they're together. Like they, that, their love for each other. Or, yeah, they fit better than um, yes, Jean Grey and Cyclops. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I, it's a believable that Wolverine and Jean Grey love each right. other in this, in, and and it's really interesting. Um, yeah, and, and it works okay. Uh, but my biggest, my biggest problem with this movie is that they do too much. They don't trust their audience. They think the audience wants a big boss fight at the end, and they don't realize that the audience really just wants to see Wolverine kill a bunch of people in Japan. Like, that right. scene where the, the 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 ninjas hit him with a thousand arrows, that was incredible. That was, that was cool looking, scene. but my wife was, like, super upset at that scene. She's like, why? She's like, why is he just letting them do that? Like, why does he just keep walking? He's not trying to... He doesn't, like, reach back and take one off or anything he's just yeah go ahead load my back up with uh uh daggers and tethers and uh i'm just gonna keep trudging along what are you supposed to do i don't know dude does he have his claws at that point yeah it's a limit to what you can do man like reach back there he's flexible he i can't reach back there but he can well, okay, he's flexible so you and your wife reach today. back there and slice some of those tethers off with your claws so the, you and your wife today you, you buy a bow and arrow set from dicks and you <laughs> shoot yourself in the back a couple times and see if you can reach back there and grab him out like <laughs> i don't have claws dude you know, I thought it was cool and it just looked cool. I mean, it I looks it looks thing. extremely cool. It they looks had extremely chains. Cool. They were pulling him. He couldn't because, like, couldn't. it works out with the way that the shot was too. Because the shot's like looking down the street, and then you've got all these tethers going into Wolverine's back, and they're following the lines of the street. You he looked know? great. He looked so, great. like, you've got all these lines in the scene that are all pointing directly at Wolverine. No, it looked fantastic. I had yeah, no problem really with cool. that. I had no problems with most of the fight scenes. I think he, like, every time I was, like, that fight scene with a shout out real quick to um, Hiriko Sanada. He's in every Jap- Japanese movie, apparently. Uh, once again, he does a, f- a fantastic job with this. I didn't understand how he lived from getting that poison. Do you? Do you understand? Did you understand that? Was he the ninja on the rooftops? No, he was a samurai guy, the, the guy's father or somebody's father. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I don't know. He got poisoned? Yeah, he got poisoned. He fell into water. And then he got back out. I don't get it. Anyway. Um, oh, he's um, Mariko's father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I didn't get that. Yeah, I don't um, know. I don't know. Maybe he just didn't get enough of the poison. Maybe. Um, But all the fight scenes and stuff work well. I got well. the remedy. It's just the one thing that didn't work well was the final fight with this big silver samurai dude. That's just not that is not what people want to see. Uh, it, it looked weird. Like how like he made a device specifically to go into Wolverine's claws and get his bone marrow. How did he know that was going to work? It's odd. Um, this the overall fight seems felt clunky to me. This whole thing felt weird. Yeah, I didn't like the bone. I don't like the uh, I don't like the bone claws. Well, you, he's going to have him in X-Men 97, so I hope you're ready. I think they should look more... Um, like, they shouldn't look like fingers. 
Mm. You know, Which they should look like they should look like bird claws. Bird claws? Yeah. Like talons? Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, I, right? I, I, I mean, uh, the the fingers are creepy looking. They're not fingers; they're long bones. But they look like fingers. They look like they've got like they've got you know all the ridges and bumps and everything for muscle to connect to. I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I am going to say that you're misguided. <laughs> <laughs> How am I misguided? It's just like no one wants to see weird talons coming out of Wolverine's. And no like, one wants to see bone claws coming out of him. But here's the deal: Wolverine's claw style, what the claws look like, have been yeah. controversy for a long time. Different artists do different things. Like, my, um, was it Tom McFarlane? He made Wolverine's claws look like like small little spears, so they didn't have like a sharp edge. They were like. Actual, they actually look like talons. If you, if you, yeah, let me actually get a picture up. I'll send it to you. Okay. Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane. McFarlane Wolverine. Uh, let's see. He's the guy that's responsible for. What was his big character? Uh, Spawn. Yes, Spawn. He actually has many different ways of doing Wolverine's claws. Oh, and none of them looked. None of them were consistent. That's mm. interesting. Huh. Interesting. I thought they looked different than this. Hmm. Anyway, um, so I like Wolverine's claws the way they do them in the movie. I like the way they looked at looked like the, the the actual metal claws, the bone claws. I could. The metal care. claws were fine in the movie, yeah, for sure. But I, I don't care about the bone claws that much. Yeah, um, I don't like them. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I, I, I like the idea that Wolverine got his claws because of the Antimantium, not because of uh, anything else. But I mean, mm. I'm curious what Wolverine heads have to say. I should go, I should go into Reddit and, and type it out and see what they say. Yeah, you should. Um, but as far as this movie is concerned, overall, I think this was a good attempt by the studios to make finally make a Wolverine movie that fans wanted. I think that Logan's going to be the movie that everybody's going to say is University the Wolverine movie. But yeah. I don't know anyone who can play Well, they Wolverine. are saying it. They are yeah. saying it already. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know anyone who can play Wolverine but Hugh Jackman. And he's the quintessential Wolverine at this point. Um, like, apparently Hugh Jackman and Kevin Feige were both like, you know, we shouldn't undo what we did in Logan. Mm. That was such a good movie. had such a great ending. Mm. You shouldn't be in Deadpool and the Wolverine. Well, why did he do it? But then... Um, I've you know I've just seen like stuff on the internet. But this Hugh Wolverine Jackman. is not the. This is a different Wolverine from. A it's a different universe. Wolverine. So Hugh Jackman said that he knows that Ryan Reynolds will fight for Wolverine mm-hmm. just as much as he would. Yeah. Um, and that he'll do the right thing. He won't. I think at the, it, I he think won't at the end undo of, what what happened in Logan. Yeah, I think that at the end of Deadpool two, Wolverine won't be around. I think that, that, that that's that's kind of how it's going to look to me. Um, I, I think remember. I think this is the last. You mean Deadpool? You mean Deadpool three? Yeah, yeah, Deadpool three. I think we'll, this is the. I think Deadpool three will be the last Wolverine that Hugh Jackman ever does. I think I, getting, I agree with that. He's getting older, and plus, like, unless this is it, people are giving this people are giving this movie high praise, so people really think this movie's good. Um, Deadpool three. So we'll see. I, I think I think it's a mistake. I mean, if you think about it. Um, there's been how it's been one, two, three different Spider Men since Hugh Jackman has become Wolverine. <laughs> so this, so they have refreshed right. Spider Man three to, twice, yeah. and they have not refreshed Wolverine at all. And it just feels like that's, that's a mistake. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, it, because like, actors age, and this is the deal: actors age. They get tired of doing this stuff all the time. They want to do other things, and it's okay to refresh. Get a, a younger actor. That wants to do, and then that younger actor does it for a while, gets sick of it. Someone else pull, pull, pulls in, and it's okay to do that. It's fine, but they need to do it in a responsible way that makes sense. And I feel like with this, with Deadpool three, I think they probably they probably should have recasted Wolverine uh, instead. Of, but I think they needed Hugh Jackman to get people into the theaters. So I mean, I don't know. It's just it's a it's a hard one. Let's um, give this a grade. I give it a solid B plus. B plus. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Is that too high or too low? It seems like it's high to me. What would you give it? 
Um, I'd give it a B without the ending. Mm. Uh, I think the ending maybe takes it down to a solid C+. Plus. That's way too low, don't you think? I don't know. Mm. The ending's pretty bad. Yeah. The ending's not terrible, but the end is the worst part of the movie. Yeah. The worst part. It, it gets... It, not only is it dumb, but it gets messy, because you've got both Viper and the Silver Samurai there. And yeah, and, and plus two... There's a there's a clean there's a cleanliness at the end where where Wolverine just gets on a jet and flies off. There's no real long term repercussions. So right. it just feels a little bit too. And what's with the romantic involvement between him and Mariko? I don't know. There's one. And then he just flies stuff. off, and that's it. That's like, how it works. Know. I'm Wolverine. I kiss and I kiss and leave, baby. I'm yeah. I'm, the, I'm, I'm Marvel's James Bond. Now. Yeah, I'm the Marvel's James Bond. Yeah, Yukio and I are we're, we're taking off. I wish who Jackman was a little shorter, so he'd be comic accurate Wolverine. Because Wolverine's yeah. like five foot five, right? You know, right? That'd be kind of cool. Anyway, um, we got some news you can't abuse, Ray. Ooh, I'm ready for that. First of all, Blade is never coming out. So yeah. if you were hoping for a Blade <laughs> movie, that's never happening. Uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So I'll give a quote. From, I just posted to the internets from our Super Sideshow account yesterday that you might say the Blade movie is beleaguered. It's yeah, well, yeah. Um, so I'm like, so uh, his, this is from the Variety article. Unlike virtually the rest of the industry, Marvel Studios commits to producing every title it announces, sometimes well in advance of hiring the filmmaker team that makes them, as was the case with Blade. Despite all the delays and setbacks, insiders say that Marvel remains enthusiastic about getting the film in front of cameras with Ali in the title role. And so, okay, how? Like, how much you know? older is he than when they started this? Yeah. And so in 2019, they announced Blade. In twenty, so in twenty, in twenty, in February twenty twenty one, they have a they have a screenplay writer. In twenty, in July nineteen twenty one, um, Basim Tarak signs to direct. What's he done? I've never heard that name before in my life. I don't believe. No, me neither. Uh, in November twenty twenty one, all. Uh, Ali gives the first performance as Blade in movies Ex- Eternals, but it's just his voice. Okay, so yeah, Ali, we have the Blade's voice, which everybody forgets. Um, Yay! Uh, November twenty twenty one, uh, we have a we have an actor joins the cast. Twenty twenty two, another actor joins the cast. Uh, twenty twenty two, year at least day. It's po- so this movie was supposed to come out in November three, November third, twenty twenty three. It's supposed to come out last year. Uh, so in twenty twenty two, the director leaves. Uh, October 2022, the release date is pushed back. A new director comes in. It's just a dude. It's just a mess. Like they haven't yeah. started production yet, right? I don't and even like, think they have a script yet. And my Michelle Ali, who is great, but when he was announced as Blade, his Hollywood stock was through the roof. People were, like, knew him. People were excited. It's not the same anymore. Like people, like, what's the last thing he's even worked on? You know, so like, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like it might be his fault. Could be. Um, man, Could be. What, what a mess. Nearly two years after taking the directing reins, Damage quietly departed the production, which was reported last week, but like weeks later. Meanwhile, veteran Marvel scribe Eric Person, he wrote the Fantastic Four, Black Widow, and Thor Ragnarok, signed on to write the script, making him at least the sixth writer to tackle the screenplay. Wow. And X-Men 97 head writer Bo De- DeMeo. Bo. Uh, yeah. Bo so DeMeo. He, yes. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, he was going to write the script, too. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, listen. Let's listen. Here's Marvel, here's the deal. Marvel, here's the deal. I want you to go find Wesley Snipes. Let's go find him. Right? Yeah. Um, go find the guy who wrote and directed West, uh, the Marvel um, uh, the Blade, Blade movies. Yeah. I forget his name, but he's good. Get him in a room together. Figure out how to integrate Wesley Snipes' Blade into this new movie, and then you're set. Like, do not yeah. try to make this without Wesley Snipes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. Do the? Did we do? Hey, did we do a podcast? We haven't done these. We haven't done Blade, have we? Did we do Blade? We did do Blade. I I think we did do Blade. We did do we Blade. Did, yeah. Oh. Such a good movie. Yeah, I would do it again. I was getting excited. Let's do Blade. Yeah, we can do it again. <laughs> We're not going to do Blade again. We can, <laughs> no, go, uh, go back and watch Blade. But uh, I used to watch that movie every Halloween. 
Oh yeah, right. Yeah, this yeah. is so good. Blade one and two are just perfect. Blade three sucks, but Blade one and two is <sighs> they're all okay. No, nah, Blade one's just amazing. well. Blade one is fantastic. Yeah, it's, Blade yeah, one is just absolutely it's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay, anyway, and like uh, the director at the time, like that was one of their first. Mm-hmm. Like they, I don't think they were a big director or mm-hmm. anything. So. Next up. Um, okay, so oh, uh, I will say, um, hmm, we were talking about oh, this is about Deadpool, uh, the Deadpool director for the first movie. Everything that I gave him credit for mm-hmm. is actually the Deadpool director for the second movie. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, <makes laughs> we've got that coming up. So like all the all the cool stuff I was saying that, about that director, it's actually the director for the the new uh, the Deadpool two movie that we're getting ready to watch. Well, we're, we're going to do that next. Our next one, yep. Yep. All right, so here's a little quiz. I'm going to tell you a name of a movie, and you tell me how much it costs to make. Ready? Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Cost to make. Uh, $130 million. $250 million. Wow, okay. Um, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. $180. $250 million. What?! Thor, Love, and Thunder. I can see that for Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't see that for Black Panther. Thor, Love, and Thunder. Uh, okay, Thor, Love, and Thunder. I'm going to go with 220. 220 250 million. Uh, Eternals. Do they just, is that like, the, hey, hey, we're making a movie. It's 250 million. That's Eternals. It. Eternals. 250 million? 254 million. Uh, <laughs> uh, Spider Man 3. They went 4 million over budget on that one. Spider Man um, Three, which was filmed way, like, way earlier than these movies, so you have to factor in inflation with this cost. Okay, Spider Man Three, one hundred eighty million, two hundred fifty-eight million. <laughs> That's not including inflation. Okay. Now, wait, who, who's is this? The Toby McGuire? Yes, Toby McGuire, yes. Okay. It wow. made it made eight hundred ninety-six million worldwide. So okay. it actually so made a lot of Yeah, it's, it was like, worth it. Ant Man the Wasp. Oh God. Uh two hundred million. Two hundred and seventy six million dollars. Wow. Doctor Strange and the multiverse. What? Multiverse of madness. Yes. Um I'm gonna go uh I'm gonna go two sixty. Three hundred and fifty one million dollars. <gasps> Now it made nine hundred fifty-five million, so it right. It, it also it, it was the fourth highest-grossing film that year. Yeah. But wow, that's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Okay, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Well, this is early, but it's later than that. Tobey Maguire, maybe. Two fifteen. Three hundred sixty-five million. Oh my god. Uh, Avengers Infinity War. That's all, that's all stacked cast, right? That's, yeah, probably. Yeah. Avengers Infinity War. Uh, yeah, let's go with uh, 400 on that one. 325 million. Okay. And the, and the most expensive Marvel movie ever made was Avengers Endgame. How much? Uh, okay. 380. So it says, while Deadline r- reported the cost behind Endgame as $356 million, the actor cost appears to be far higher. Speaking at the Sands Air National Film Festival at St. Andrews in March 2022, co-director Joe Rosso confirmed both Endgame and Infinity War each cost $500 million plus. Here's a quote from Russo. I don't know if these numbers have been accurately reported, but in the case of Avengers Endgame and Infinity War, each of those movies was $500 million plus. So this is an incredible amount of money that is being spent on these movies. For almost half a billion dollars to make Endgame. That's wow. insane. Wow. And like, a lot of that is acting. So yeah, yeah. paying actors. But yeah, if you, if you pay all those actors and all the... But it's mostly just production. It's like... And when we talk about production, it's, it's nerds in a room with a computer. Well, that's good. They should be getting that money. Yeah, but that's a lot of money, dude. That is a lot of money. I that's always money? felt... I always felt that CGI was better for the environment because they weren't making a bunch of sets. They were just yeah. using CGI. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the CPUs are using the energy to... to yeah, it uses process. lots of energy and lots of water. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I don't know. So, uh, $500 million. That's crazy. That's absolutely insane. 
Uh, and the movie probably grossed the the movie worldwide made two point seven billion dollars. So it's not they make some money off of it, but not nearly mm. as much as you think. You know, mm. like they like uh, it's like well, I, I guess profit. I guess a profit margin of if I spend five, of, bucks, uh, I get twenty dollars. Right? That's worth it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. If I spend five, I get twenty. Yeah, everybody would make that bet every time. Yeah, I would do that all the t- all day. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. Anyway, there's an article from... Um, Plus, they make up a lot of this stuff, too. They're very creative with their accounting. Yeah, that's true. And, like, plus, like, I mean, they're, t- they're putting in food costs, travel, like, somebody right. taking a day off. And then these execs are getting a lot of money. So, like, don't get it twisted. When someone says they have producer credit, they get a million just for having that name. So, you know, it's a lot. There is a lot of wasted money throughout Hollywood. So that's why people want to be in Hollywood. Uh, yeah. that is it for the Wolverine and today's podcast, Mike. Um, happy Father's Day, by the way. Happy Father's Day. I'm not a father, so Mike, give uh, let's that pretend. was a happy Father's Day to all of our listeners who are fathers. Okay, yeah, and yeah. Mike, give us a piece of advice. So, for a new dad who's not a dad who's going to be a dad soon, give them one piece of advice. Um, you don't know anything. Mm. That's it. That's it. It's all learning. Yeah, best so, man. Best so. Shout out to our fathers. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, Mike, um, how can our listeners share this podcast and share it with the friends and family? We're on a summer schedule, so we're we're not we're recording every other week. Um, but right. there's still lots of first to talk about. Lots of, lots of shows going on. So, how can people learn? We're more getting about- geared up for Deadpool and Wolverine. What do you mean? Huh? What? What? We're these Deadpool movies, these Wolverine movies that we're watching. We're getting ready for the big Deadpool and Wolverine movie that's coming. Very excited. Very excited. Yeah. This is a very responsible use of our time. I'm not very excited about it. I'm not I'm I'm kind of mediocre excited about it. <laughs> it's like, Everybody I, but you is very excited about I'll it. go to the theater and watch it. I'll laugh, but yeah. What are you gonna get? What, what are you gonna what's your snack gonna be? Oh, popcorn and, and a Coke. Popcorn and a Coke. It's the only time I drink Coke in that in that quantity. Sometimes no. I get a little <laughs> shot glass of Coke, but I yeah, never really yeah, drink yeah. it much. I right. drink Coke like once every once a, a, every three or four months, not very often, unless it's in like a mm-hmm. mixed drink or something. And then some popcorn and just sit and you know, hopefully be left alone. I don't like sitting around people anymore in a theater. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I, don't. I might do popcorn. I I have a I have a fondness for movie theater nachos though. Mm-hmm. Super that low quality cheese and some pickled jalapenos on top. I like um like that the the cheese sauce on nachos. Are you a cheese yeah. sauce fan or are you a shred cheese melty fan? I mean, in the theater you got to have that garbage cheese sauce. I just don't understand nachos. At a restaurant, cheese. at a restaurant, let's do both. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm down. Let's do a case like a melted queso and some shredded cheese on it. Yeah. 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 I like my nachos to be a little, little, little melty. A little like I like the crispiness, but also I oh, want the sauce. To yeah. 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 You want? Kinda... Yeah. You want a mixture. You want? Uh, yeah. This this chip is a little wet and a little crisp. Yeah, that's what I want. I want to make sure about this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hit that share button. Share it with all your friends and share it with your fathers today. Yeah. Just do a big group chat with everybody who has a kid. I'm sure they'll love this podcast. Yeah. This is a great, um, this is a great uh, family oriented podcast. This this movie is perfect for Father's Day. Yeah, sure. Watch it with your children. <laughs> yeah, as Wolverine's like cutting into his chest. <laughs> yeah. You know? What's the What's the rating on this? It's not too bad. PG no, thirteen. Yeah. This is, is this is just a movie to have Hugh Jackman without his shirt on. This is that's all we want to do is show Hugh Jackman without his shirt, which is I think it's just fun. All right, next week we're doing Deadpool two. Well, the week after next. Yeah, Deadpool week after 2. next Deadpool two. Yeah. 